This webcast will give you a brief introduction into the analysis of RNA sequencing data. The first thing I wanted to show you is an RNA sequencing project on the Genomatics Mining Station. To the left you can see the data set of the project where we have several read files that were provided to us by Illumina and they are taken from several breast cancer cell lines like BT20, BT474. Um, to the left you can see the, the type of file, FASTQ, um, that it's base coding and that it's paired end data. And if we click on any of these files, we get statistics about the reads like the nucleotide distributions or the sequence length distribution or the nucleotide distribution along the read. Now what you see here is an effect of the random hexamer priming and to the end it averages out, which is a perfectly fine and what we would expect for RNA sequencing data. Once the read files are all in place, we can start with a mapping. To start a mapping, click on Analyze Data down here, and then we get a selection of all the analysis we can start. For now, let's select the Genomatics Mapper, and let's say we want to map the BT20 and the BT474 cell line. We click both, and then to the right we can select the parameters. For example, the organism, the mapping library. Now here, for RNA sequencing data, we might want to map against the genome, against the SPICE Junction library, or against the transcriptome library depending on the downstream analysis. For example, to call gene fusions, we map against the genome and the transcriptome library to do a reliable gene fusion detection downstream of that. For now, let's say we want to map against the genome. Down here, we can select different parameters that determine the mapping quality. We can say that the alignments are to be printed in BAM format. And here we can tell the mapper to calculate de novo splicing, both in global and in a local manner. The global one will allow us to pick up gene fusions, splicing reads between different chromosomes, for example, and the local spliced alignment will allow to map long reads among multiple exons. To start the mapping, we simply click on Done. Now these mappings will take a little while, so we can have a look at the mappings that I've run prior today. Um, here we can see we have a mapping against the transcriptome, a mapping against the genome, and a mapping against splice junctions. So we can click on any of these mappings and then get statistics about the results. For example, here we have 94% unique hits and these tell us how many hits were multiple and how many were insufficient. And we can also look at um, the quality of the unique hits and of the multiple hits. We can also look at other analyses that you can run downstream, for example, the read classification. For example, here we have the genomic distribution of different um, annotations like exons, and here we see how much they are enriched in the RNA sequencing data set. We can look at velvet assembly results. We can look at SNP detection results. For example, let's click on the gene, uh, SNPs that we called with the BT20 cell line. Here, for example, we see the statistics about um, SNPs that were called in the introns, exons, if they were homozygous or heterozygous. We can also look at the gene fusion detection that we run, for example, on MCF7 here. So you can click on that, and you get results about gene fusions within a chromosome, across different chromosomes, or read through candidates. And you can have a look at things like cluster size, fusion partners, um, strand orientation and also look at the gene fusions in a table gene 1, gene 2 um, across different chromosomes within or read through candidates and you can export that data and uh, do more downstream analysis with those. The last thing I wanted to show you is what type of downstream analysis can be done with RNA sequencing data. For example differential expression analysis can be done with DE-seq and here you can see a plot of the genes, their fold change, and their base mean. Another thing we can look at are networks based on the differentially expressed genes. Here we see a breast neoplasm network. Uh, we can view the data in the transcriptome viewer. This is, for example, FOXM1. We can look at expression profiles for different transcripts here. Or we can have a look at the data in the genome browser to get an overview of what exons are expressed in the different cell lines. I hope you found this introduction helpful. For more information, please contact our support or go to genomatics.com.